Lesson 3.1c, Writing Mixed Numbers as Decimals. A mixed number consists of a whole number and a fraction, like 3 and a half or 5 and 13 fifteenths, and so on. We can convert a mixed number to a decimal by setting the whole number to the side as we rewrite the fractional part as a decimal. If we have 5 and 1 fourth, we set the 5 aside and we worry about the 1 fourth. We do 1 divided by 4. We see, after doing long division, that it's 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths. We add it to the whole number. We can add a decimal point in a 0 or two zeros or as many as we want so that they have the same amount of digits. We get 5 and 25 hundredths. And we talked about this before. To show the digits of a repeating decimal, we can write a bar above the digits that repeat. For 11 24ths, only the 3 repeats. So we write a bar above the 3. Or we can use an ellipsis, that's 3 dots, to show the pattern continues. 1 -third is equal to 0 0.3, and then the 3 continues. So we can put an ellipsis there to show that it continues. And remember, as we're finding the fractional part as a decimal, this is the numerator and this is the denominator. We're going to use this as the dividend and the denominator as the divisor. So we have 5 divided by 8. We're seeing how many times 8 can fit into 5. We may have to add a decimal point and some zeros to keep dividing. The numerator is on the inside. The denominator is outside. Emma bought 5 and 3 fourths yards of fabric. Write 5 and 3 fourths as a decimal. The first thing we do is set aside the whole number 5. And we use long division to find the quotient of 3 divided by 4. We write a decimal point and zeros to the dividend, and that will help us continue dividing until we get a zero remainder or the digits repeat. So we do 3 divided by 4, we get 75 hundredths. Now we add the whole number to our quotient. We had 5 as a whole number. We can even write a decimal point and give it a couple of zeros so they have the same number of digits. We have 5 and 75 hundredths. And keep in mind, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. We can write a mixed number as an improper fraction, then divide. So we can write it as a fraction greater than 1. We multiply the whole number by the denominator and add the numerator. That's our new numerator. We write it over the denominator. We have 23 fourths. Now we divide 23 divided by 4. We do our long division until we get a zero remainder or the numbers start to repeat and we get 5 and 75 hundredths. And since our decimal ends at the hundredths place, it's a terminating decimal. And remember, we read a decimal point as AND. We see a 4, a decimal point, and a 6. It's read as 4 AND 6 tenths. Sarah made 2 and 1 third quarts of lemonade. Write 2 and 1 third as a decimal. We have a 2 plus a 1 third. We set the 2 aside, and we do 1 divided by 3. That gives us a 0 0.333, and we're going to keep continuing because see how we have a 1, 0? Then we have a 1, 0, we have a 1, 0. It's going to keep repeating. So we can write it as 0 0.3 with the bar over the top and add them and get 2 and 3 tenths, and the 3 has the bar over the top. We can also write it as 2.33 with the ellipses. We can also do 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7, and write it over the 3 denominator and have 7 thirds, and divide 7 divided by 3 and get 2.33 and write the ellipses. Or we could write 2.3 with the bar over the top. And since our decimal repeats the 3 endlessly, it's a repeating decimal. It's telling us to write these fractions and decimals in order from least to greatest. 
To do this, we need to rewrite them all in the same form as all fractions or all decimals. We can write 3 and a half as 3.50. We can write this one just as it is, because we're going to turn them all into decimals. This one can stay as it is. And 3 and 2 fifths, we can do 2 divided by 5 and then add the whole number 3. And we see that it's 3 and 40 hundredths or 3.4, we can just add the zero so they ha all have a hundredths place. We write them in order as their original form. We don't write them in order in their decimal form, we write them in their original form. So the least would be 34 hundredths, then it would be 3 and 40 hundredths, then it would be 3 and 44 hundredths, then it would be 3 and 50 hundredths. And we can stack them vertically to help us compare their place values. And using zeros to give them the same amount of digits can help. We see that this is zero whole number, so that's the least. And this has the most, so that's the greatest. A rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio of two integers as long as the denominator is not zero. So it can be written to look like a fraction. We have 28 hundredths. We can write the 28 over a 100 denominator. This is a rational number. Negative 3 fifths, well, that's already written as a ratio. 64, the whole number, can be written with a denominator 1. Here we have 1 thousandth. We can write a 1 over a 1,000 and if you remember, this is one-third. So we ask ourselves, can it be written as a fraction? If it can, it's a rational number. We can identify repeating decimals as decimals that have one or more digits that repeat infinitely. For 7 elevenths, we're going to do 7 divided by 11. And as we begin to divide, we notice that we get a 6 then a 3, then a 6, then a 3, and a 6, and a 3. And if we continue on, we're going to keep getting 6 and 3. We're trying to see how many times 11 can fit into 70. That's 6 times, and 11 times 6 is 66. We subtract and get a 4 and drop this 0 down. Now we're trying to find how many times 11 can fit into 40. That would be 11 times 3 for 33. We subtract and get a 7, and when we drop the next 0 down, we get a 70 again. Then we come down here and we're getting a 40 again. See that? Then we get a 70, then we get a 40. So it, the 6 and the 3 are going to keep repeating, and we can write it as 0 0.63 with a bar over the 6 and the 3, or we can write it as 0 0.63 with an ellipsis. We write a bar only on top of the digits that are repeating. For 5 thirteenths, we do 5 divided by 13, and look at all the zeros I had to add, and I had to keep dropping the zeros down. And look at the quotient. We have 0 0.384615, and then it goes 384 again. So it's going to start repeating. We divide until we notice the digits begin to repeat, or if we get a zero remainder. And if you look, we're fitting 13 into a 50, and it fits in three times. We do our subtraction, and we're going to fit the 13 into a 50, a 110, a 60, an 80, a 20, a 70, and then it starts to repeat 50, 110, 60, just like up here. So we know that this is a repeating decimal. We can write it with a bar above the digits that are repeating. So we're finished with Lesson 3.1, and I really hope you understand about using the long division to write a fraction or a mixed number as a decimal. 3.2 is split into four parts, and next we're going to do adding rational numbers with the same sign. Now I prefer you do the long division by hand, but if you end up using a calculator, you need to be careful because the calculator may not show all the repeating digits. 
it may just cut it short after maybe five digits. So to be really sure, try doing it by hand and keep dividing and keep adding more zeros to drop down until you get a remainder of zero or you absolutely are sure the digits are repeating. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.